dear friends in Christ Jesus and children of Mama Mary. Welcome to day 22 of the October month of Mary. One of the most controversial, yes, revered titles of our Blessed Virgin Mary is that of being a virgin. Today, we shall reflect on three such titles of the Litany of Loreto revolving around her virginity, namely, Mary, Queen Conceived Without Original Sin, Mary, Virgin of Virgins, and Mary, Queen of Virgins. If there is one doctrine of the Catholic Church which is misunderstood and misrepresented outside the Church, it is the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception. Many who laugh at the idea of the fall and original sin and therefore are forced to claim their own Immaculate Conception refuse to grant that privilege to Mary. Their whole scheme of argument is this. The Catholic Church honors Mary. Therefore, we, to show our antipathy to the Church, must belittle her. Others confuse the Immaculate Conception with the Virgin Birth. The birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary was not a virgin birth. Her parents, Joachim and Anne, cooperated with God in the formation of her body. This is the physical aspect of conception. But the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception is focused primarily on the spiritual aspect. The creation of her soul by God, which is so holy, and its infusion into her body difficult to comprehend. As Pope Alexander VII declared centuries ago, concerning the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, ancient indeed is that devotion of the faithful based on the belief that her soul in the first instant of its creation and in the first instant of the soul's infusion into the body was by a special grace and privilege of God which was declared on December 8th 1661 when Adam and Eve were created and their souls infused into their bodies they were without sin hence immaculate but they fell, sinned, lost the state of sanctifying grace and were banished forever from the sight of God. It was only that God in his infinite goodness promised to redeem them, to take them back and in due time did send his only begotten son Jesus to become man and redeem them. But meanwhile, every descendant of Adam and Eve, by that sin of the first parents, contracted the debt, contracted original sin. But definitely, friends, it's not a hopeless case, as God in his infinite mercy removed the stain of original sin for you and me through baptism when our parents go to church after we are born. The perpetual virginity of Mary is the doctrine that Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was a virgin, ante partum, in partum, est post partum, that is, before, during, and after the birth of Christ. It is one of the four Marian dogmas of the Catholic Church and is held also by the Eastern Orthodox Churches in Eastern Christianity and also by some Lutherans and Anglicans in Western Christianity. There is probably, however, no biblical basis for
for Mary's perpetual virginity, although her virginity prior to the birth is attested independently in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. The church teaches us that her virginity before the birth is revealed by scripture and affirmed in the Apostles' Creed, where we state that Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Pope Martin's definition of her virginity at the moment of birth means that this caused no physical injury to her virginal seal, which is both symbol and part of her perfect virginity of body and soul. This is a doctrine which most heretics, even within the church and outside, refuse to believe. And they have many counter arguments. And even today, that is a favorite topic among many non-believers and others. Yet friends, my reflection today supersedes these arguments as me of little faith and a poor sinner we you and me we all know we belong to the one catholic church and recite the nicene creed during every sacrifice of the mass and have more faith in mary as a virgin of virgins queen of virgins and queen conceived without original sin. Mary was indeed redeemed by God and there is a difference between her case and ours. God redeemed her but by an anticipated redemption. So she is the rightful queen conceived without original sin. Friends, we have to pray to her constantly to make us pure in mind body, heart and soul so that we attain salvation and join our blessed Redeemer in heaven. She is the purest of God's creations, stainless, spotless, pure and majesty and so she remained even after she stayed with Joseph after the Saviour went and joined him in heaven. Let us pray to that queen of virgins to keep us pure from falling into sin again and again. How blessed is our Lord and our blessed mother. Ave Maria. Amen.